it is, sealed with Plasti Dip and ready for painting. Now, the keen observers amongst my audience might notice that I used white Plasti Dip, and there's a reason for that, which will be revealed to you later in this video. I've been filling small gaps in here with this quick seal. Um, it's probably not necessary, but they bother me and I don't know how to leave well enough alone. So I've been doing that and the whole thing is sticky in weird places. So I'm trying not to touch it too much now. Once I'm confident that the quick seal and the Plasti Dip have fully dried, I'm going to put on the pink paint and the gray paint. So the next time you see this, it'll be looking at least kind of like the gun that it's supposed to look like. I'll be including the reflex sight on top of this gun. So I made this little frame out of ABS plastic and inside of it, I'm going to mount a clear acrylic lens and I'll um, paint or etch the uh, reticle on that somehow. Here's that clear acrylic again and I've printed out my reticle, but that's not going to be terribly easy to cut out. So I printed out some different ones. These will let me lay a straight edge along all these tiny lines and hopefully that'll help me keep them straight. All right, that's going to get stuck on with some two-sided tape. All right, let's see what we got. I'm not sure I went through that protective white layer. Now, come on up. Ah, there it goes. This might just work. All right, I'll keep going on this. Well, I think that actually worked. I'm a little bit surprised, but um, quite pleased. So now I'm going to spray some yellow on this and that will give me the yellow color. All right, here it is with yellow paint on it. Let's peel off the protective plastic and see what we've got. That is cool. Look at that. I've still got some uh, hand fitting to do to get it inside the little frame here, but uh, that's not so bad. Well, here she is all painted. And I've left the color a little bit rich because I'm going to go in with my new airbrush and lighten up a lot of these edges so um yeah i don't really know how to airbrush but we'll figure it out <laughs> oh no that's too much paint yeah that's all right yeah i thought about this for a long time and I figured the only way I could get this sort of um, weathered look was with an airbrush. And it's going to double for doing all of the little doodly doos on there as well. So, and I kind of always wanted one. Oh, sh that's a lot. Next time I'll need to actually get the right paint for this. I think that would help a lot. Okay, I'm gonna stop there before I get out of control. But that's, um, I think that looks pretty good. 
uh, all things considered, things like I've never used an airbrush before. Hey. All right, we're back to do all of the little scribbles and doodles here. I've mixed some black and some brown in the color pot here. I think that's about right. I'm not sure this is going to look perfect, but it uh, should look okay. Yeah, it's not going to be great. Screwed that one up a little bit. Yeah, that kind of worked. I got pretty much all of the graffiti done. Um, now I'm gonna go back in with some black and add some shadows to it. And I might as well take off the masking now. Oh, I should probably mention, I used white Plasti Dip because I decided to make this a corrosive gun. So I wanted that white underneath the fluorescent paint so that it actually sort of fluoresces. And now I see that the gray paint I used didn't stick very well. So I'm going to have a lot of cleaning up to do because this is not supposed to be fluorescent. Wow. That gray paint is really bad. You know, I think I'm going to have to touch this up before, uh, before moving on. done some hand painting and I've done some more airbrushing on it. The next step is hand painting the cell shading and after that uh, final assembly and clear coating. Let's do the time lapse now. That is one complete side. It takes a couple hours to do a side and I'm kind of exhausted from it. So if I were to start the other side now, I know I wouldn't be happy with the results. So I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow. It's time for final assembly and I've got days of work into this thing and I could still screw it all up now. So we can't get sloppy for the charging handle. I hogged out a hole here with my Dremel and I'm using a 3 8 inch rod of PVC to hold it in. Now I'm not going to permanently attach this because it's going to be much easier for transport and carrying around conventions if this charging handle isn't sticking out of the side. Because for right-handed shooters, anything that protrudes out of the left side of the gun gets caught up on your gear. So this is going to stay removable. So once I start attaching pieces to the top, I won't be able to set it on the top to work on the bottom. So I'm going to get the bottom done first. And because I'm going to need a little bit of working time with this, 
we'll be using five minute epoxy. Any squeeze out that I get on this will be okay because it's just going to help hold the rest of it on there. pistol grip is attached and semi-rigid. I think I'll do the barrels next. I had to reduce the uh, diameter just a little bit so that they'll slide in easily. That's gonna get. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna do the magazine and the rear sight next. Now the magazine sort of bent on me there as the layers of paint cured. So I'm going to slide it in, stick it down. I think if I put glue in here on the magazine, all right, now I can slide it in. Okay, this is just going to stick on here. going to put the reticle in the sight before I mount the sight on the gun. I'm using epoxy for this for two reasons. One, I want a little bit of working time. And two, super glue can sometimes dry a little bit uh, frosty. And that would really ruin this, so. Now the real trick is not getting any epoxy on the lens. Okay, well, there's epoxy all over the place now, so that failed. Oh, then none of that was on camera. Well, anyways, uh, it's in there, so I'll give that a few minutes to cure. All done. The legendary Hyperion submachine gun, the bitch. I chose to make mine corrosive because I've already got a fire gun, didn't need a second. Now I just need a shotgun and an explosive gun. If you've got suggestions, leave them in the comments below. So thanks for watching, especially if you stuck through all six videos. I really hope you got something out of them. If nothing else, the inspiration to make something of your own. And if you want to follow along with my projects as they happen, you can follow me on Instagram. If you want to see high quality photos of my work, you can find those on my Pandora's Props Facebook page and also Pandora's Props DeviantArt page. So remember to like this video if you like this video and subscribe if you like this video because there's going to be more coming. And until next time, keep on making. <laughs>